Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thank you so much for visiting my YouTube channel where I try to bring you a wide variety of computer, do-it-yourself, upgrade, and repair videos. In this video, I'll show you how to fix a problem at startup with a Razer computer where you're getting an error message where it says exiting PXE ROM. Perhaps there's a black screen with a blinking cursor in the corner. You can't get past it. I'll show you how to fix that now. As always guys, please remember to like and share if this video was helpful, if you think it can help someone else, and please feel free to subscribe if you enjoy do-it-yourself computer content. For those of you who want to support the channel a little further and leave a small donation, at the end of the video I'll show you a couple ways you can do that. Okay, so now let's get into the project. First thing I want to shout out to you guys is this problem you're seeing in your Razer. It could be several different things causing this. Uh, you could have some BIOS issues, uh, BIOS settings could be messed up. You could have some hardware issues, specifically hard drive, solid state drive issues, or you could have operating system issues. All, all of these things could be the reason why you're seeing this problem with your Razer. The troubleshooting steps I'm going to show you in a certain order, you may want to do them in a different order. Only you know what happened to your computer maybe before the situation happened. Maybe for example, you dropped your computer and then this error started coming up. Well then maybe you want to start with reseeding your hard drive or your solid state drive first in case it came loose. Uh, maybe some of you got a failed Windows update before this. In that case, maybe you'd want to start troubleshooting the operating system first. So just keep in mind that the steps I'm going to show you in the order I'm going to show them to you in may not be the way you want to go. You may want to do different ones first based on your situation. So the first steps I'm going to show you is how to troubleshoot some BIOS issues. You don't have to open the computer up for that. So I'm going to show you now how to troubleshoot some BIOS issues that could be causing this problem. Okay, so to get into BIOS on a Razer laptop, it's usually your F1 key uh, after you hit your power button. Sometimes it can be your delete key. Um, if neither of those work, try the other ones because unfortunately some models do use different keys, but most of you, like me, are going to have F1. So I'm going to hit power and then start tapping on F1 right away. And there's your Razer BIOS. Uh, hopefully you guys have a general help key like I do. It shows that I'm going to use my arrow keys to move, enter keys to select, my plus and minus keys to change value. Um, some of you may need other keys. Your tab keys may move you around. Some of you may have use of your mouse in BIOS. If you can't figure out how to move around, if you can't use your keys, you can't use your mouse, guys try an external mouse or an external keyboard that plugs into your USB port. Sometimes that will allow you to have a mouse in BIOS or use your keys in BIOS. But hopefully most of you again will have a key like I do telling you how you can navigate around BIOS. One of the things you can do with your BIOS really quickly is you can just restore it to factory settings um, in case there was a sudden motherboard power loss, in case something weird happened with your settings, you can just reset it. So we'll go all the way down uh, to, in my case, save and exit. Your uh, BIOS may not be the same as mine. There's many different versions. You may have to look around your various tabs. In mine, it's save and exit, restore defaults. I can arrow down here and I can restore defaults of my BIOS. If that's something you wanna try, you would select that, you would exit, and you would continue on booting up. On your main screen usually, uh, again, you may have to look around for it, but usually on your main screen, you will see the date and time, your system date and time settings. Believe it or not, guys, if your BIOS date and time are not correct, um, it could mess up the way BIOS runs. It could stop BIOS from fully loading. And if BIOS can't fully load, your operating system can't fully load. So make sure your system date and time is correct. You, you can change it by hitting enter, select those and change it. Um, after you change it, guys, if you see your system date and time is not correct and you have to change it, save and exit, keep booting up, but keep an eye on that date and time. If after you shut your computer down, and the next time you boot up, you're looking at the same problem and you have to come back in and, and your date and time is wrong again. What that means is your motherboard and BIOS is not keeping the settings when your computer powers down, most likely because it's losing power. In that case, there's a CMOS battery on the motherboard that is designed to keep power to your motherboard even when the computer's off. That could be a sign that that battery has failed and needs to be replaced. If that's the case, 
Um, there'll be a video link on top of the screen taking you to another video showing you how to access and replace that battery. I'll also have that link below in the description if you need it. If you need more help accessing that battery in your specific model, leave me a comment with what model you're looking at, what you need help with, and I'll try to help you out. Another thing to keep an eye on in BIOS is how you're set to boot up, uh, whether legacy or UEFI. Um, again, you may have to check out your, your tabs, but for me, I'm gonna arrow over to advanced, uh, and then you can arrow down to USB configuration. I'll hit enter to open that up. And there you see it right there, legacy USB support. Um, if legacy is enabled, as mine is, you can try disabling it, which will switch it over to UEFI. Um, if you see UEFI is enabled, disable that, switch over to legacy. So basically guys, whatever you're set at, you wanna switch it to the other one, save and exit, see if your computer boots up like that. Um, there's different ways, again, there's different versions of BIOS, so some like mine here, you have to disable legacy to get at UEFI. Uh, some BIOS versions, you'll see a drop down menu where you can select what you want, um, try to figure out how yours is set up so you can change it. If that works for you, then most likely what's happened is you've lost power or BIOS has been reset somehow. You've just changed it back. Um, if after you change it, your computer works, you've just changed it back to what it should be. So if BIOS didn't turn out to be the reason why your computer is doing this, if we didn't find the cause with those troubleshooting steps, um, the next thing is the hardware and the operating system. Now as far as hardware and your hard drive and your solid state drive go, sometimes you may drop your computer, uh, you may hit it. Uh, sometimes the hard drive or solid state drive can come loose. So a quick way to see if it's just a loose issue is to reseat it. What that means is going inside, unplugging your hard drive, unplugging your solid state drive, and then plugging them back in, making sure they're secure. That's called reseating the drive. So if you've reseated your drive and you've confirmed it's not a loose issue or a loose communication issue, then we can move on to diagnose whether there's something actually wrong with the hard drive or it's an operating system issue. Now many Razer computers do not have built-in diagnostic software to test for hardware components health. Uh, some may, most will not. So when I'm doing this in my shop, I use third-party diagnostic software, but it's pretty expensive. You probably don't have it. So we're gonna try to test for the operating system and the hardware issues together. Uh, the first really quick thing we'll do to test for the operating system, I'll show you now. Now again, with most Razer computers, it'll be F9 after startup. But again, try your other function keys if that doesn't work for you. So I'm gonna hit power and immediately start tapping on F9. System recovery, system checking, and right here, recover OS partition to factory default. So you can either start the recovery or you can exit and shut down. If you can't boot up, and if we think it's an operating system issue, try this start recovery option here. It'll access your recovery partition if you've made one, um, and it'll reset your operating system. Hopefully, again, if it's an operating system error that's causing this problem, that'll take you back to before the error happened and your operating system will function, your computer should boot up. So if that didn't work on restoring or repairing the operating system, um, at this point, the next thing we're gonna try is reinstalling the operating system. Uh, either Windows 10 or Windows 11, I'll have links below in the description showing you how you can install either one of those. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to install an operating system and that will test if it's an operating system error or if it's a hard drive or solid state drive error. If the install goes correctly and you've reinstalled your operating system, well then odds are you had a very corrupt operating system that couldn't even be restored or repaired. It needed a, a reinstall, in which case you fixed your problem. If it doesn't go through and you keep seeing errors with the install, it's not finding a drive to install on, it's an unknown error. At that point, guys, you've probably identified your drive, your hard drive, solid state drive. That is most likely the issue if we can't even install a new OS onto it. In that case, replace the hard drive, replace the solid state drive, install the operating system to the new one. Uh, so I hope this troubleshooting process helped you out again. If you're at that point where you need to reinstall, there'll be links below in the description showing you how to do that. If you have any questions or comments to this process, check out the FAQs again. They could save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a comment, I will try to get back to you a couple times a day at least on those comments. 
Thank you so much for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you on my next video. And as I mentioned before, if you did want to donate to the channel, support it a little further, I'll show you a couple ways you can do that now. First, right below the video to the right hand side, you'll see the super thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. Second way, you can use your cash app. Find me at dollar sign PC helper. You can leave a dollar amount and you can even leave a little note.